On today's episode of Cooking with Waldo, we're making Thai food. Red curry with chicken. If only you could smell how fragrant this is. This is magnificent. Wait a minute, this isn't a cooking show. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Waldo and this is part two of the Gooseneck Trailer build series. In this video, I'm gonna be installing some hydraulic jacks, building toolboxes, and mounting a Harbor Freight winch. With my come and swap project truck on the road, I need a trailer to tow with it. We're building a seven ton flatbed deck over Gooseneck Trailer. Click, click. It's 20 feet long with a five foot beaver tail and it'll have hydraulic jacks, a winch, fold flat ramps, and solar battery charging. This trailer will enable me to annoy my spouse for years to come by bringing home more projects than I can handle. The first thing I'm gonna do is work on the spare tire mount up here because, well, I need something to bump my head on while I'm building the toolboxes. All right, well, the spare fits in between these two cross members here, so I just guess I'll center it. They're about 35 and a half inches between the two. At its shortest point, it looks like it's gonna be about 50 and a quarter of an inch. That's beautiful, right on the line. A lot of people have been asking me about this saw lately and I really love it. This thing is awesome. So I will put a link in the description below. Lovely, it fits. And just to top this off, I picked up a cheap tire cover on Amazon. That'll help protect the rubber from UV radiation, which causes it to crack and stuff over time so that this tire should last a long time. Yeah, the reviews for this tire cover said to go one size smaller than what the measurements say, and that's what I did, and I'm really glad I did because it fits pretty well. So up next, I want to build a toolbox for the trailer. It's going to be right around here inside of the frame rails, and it is going to be structurally integrated with the frame of the trailer, making it stronger. It's also more efficient that way because it uses the sides here and some of these members to make up the back of the toolbox so that I have to use less material. There will also be a secondary toolbox up there, but that's primarily to store the battery, the hydraulic pump, and the winch. That's just about three inches, maybe three and a sixteenth. So this piece back here is gonna make the back of the toolbox a little bit higher than the front, so there'll be a little bit of a slope, and that'll prevent water from pooling. This is also where the hinge is gonna be for the toolbox door, so I gotta put a little bit of thought into that. Thank you. 
I got this stainless hardware on the interwebs. This will be really nice. I bent this edge up a little bit so that when this goes in here, it won't let water pool in this corner. Well, it sort of functions. I still need a latch for this and a strut to hold it up. So there's still some more work to do, but it's looking pretty good so far. You can use anything as a hammer, except for a screwdriver, because that's a punch. Recycling old jokes. See if it fits or if I need to make some uh, adjustments. Oh, wow, it fits. See if this closes. Hey, it closes and it works really well the first time. It doesn't really get much luckier than that. Fantastic. So I'm gonna mount this little gas strut here to hold the lid up on its own. And uh, I wanna get this so that this is about the maximum travel on it and then when it goes down here, it should be pretty close to fully compressed. By getting the full travel of the cylinder and having it mounted as far out as I can on this, that'll give it more leverage so that it's more likely to be able to hold it up. The strut is rated for 20 pounds of force. I really just estimated to try to get the right one. I could have gone with more or less pressure, but uh, if it's not enough, I can always get a second one and mount it on the other side. Well, looks like it's not quite enough to hold it up on its own, so I guess I'll get a second one. It's pretty close though. It certainly makes it a lot easier to open. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this toolbox turned out. I think it's pretty much done except for that other strut which I just ordered and it'll be in next week. So I think we'll move on to the next thing. So next I want to make a storage space right in this area for the winch, the hydraulic pump, and the battery for those. I'm thinking I'll start out by putting in a piece of 3 16 inch plate right here, which will be nice and sturdy as a mounting location for those. pretty well, but it's not going to hold itself here. Sweet. Very good. So I got a fun little puzzle here where I get to figure out where everything should be mounted. And the thing with the most important mounting requirements is the winch here, which needs to be mounted dead in the center. On either side of the winch, there's plenty of room for the hydraulic pump and reservoir, and also the battery over here. The winch also needs its fair lead mounted right about here. And I'm gonna mount it angled very slightly downwards so that I can have the wire rope go down to a D-ring mounted pulley down below. 
As for this control box, I think it's a little bit too tall because I planned on making the top of the toolbox come up to right about here on the front. So I think I'm gonna relocate this to over here. The winch itself is a Badland ZXR 12,000 pound winch from none other than Harbor Freight. It should have adequate capacity for this application. Yeah, these mag drills are just super awesome to have when you need to drill through thick metal. This is only 3 16 so it's not that thick, but you see how easy that was to go through, and it cut through thick metal just as easily. It just takes a little bit longer. Really awesome with these annular cutters. I'll put a link in the description below. These are M10 bolts, and I drilled 7 16 holes, so they should be big enough to give me a little bit of wiggle room to get this right. Over here for the battery tray, I have some pieces of 3 16 inch thick angle iron, and I'm just gonna put these in the corners, and it'll make a really simple battery tray, but it'll be effective, and it'll hold the battery in place. Oh, and then as for choice of battery, really you could use whatever battery you want, but I picked up a group size 65 battery because it's $88 at Walmart, and it has 850 cold cranking amps, which is one of the biggest batteries you can get for such a small amount of money, so it's good value. Oh, I want to say thanks to the viewer who recommended a while back to cut chain links in half as a way to create attachment points for things. Pretty slick idea. There, that's a simple but effective way of keeping the battery in place. Look at that. That is what you like to see. Look at that, made in the good old US of A. At this point, I have everything mounted back there except for one thing, and that is the fair lead. I cut off some quarter inch flat bar to make the fair lead mount. So for this upper toolbox, I ordered a 40 pound gas strut instead of a 20 pound. So this definitely probably should be strong enough to hold this lid up by itself. I'm gonna have this thing open like this much. I think that'll be good. 
The added bonus here is that I guess if it's raining, it'll kind of shield the stuff that's inside of here. Seems to fit pretty well. Look at that, it works really well. It closes easily, it holds itself up. Pretty happy with how this turned out. Now, before I start running hydraulic hoses and stuff like that, I wanna get these jacks installed. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind before I mount these jacks, and number one, the instructions say that there's a maximum of eight inches that the bottom of this is allowed to stick out from your mounting location. So in this case, it would be right here. Number two, the jacks have a maximum stroke of 20 inches, which is pretty good. It gives me some decent flexibility there, but that's something to keep in mind. Wherever you mount it, you wanna make sure that when this comes out 20 inches, that it comes out far enough to actually lift the trailer up enough. And number three, the hydraulic ports here. You wanna make sure that these are pointing in the most convenient direction where you're gonna be running your hoses. So I ground the paint off of this so that I can weld this to the trailer, and I also made my marks as for where this is gonna line up on the trailer. I figure it's a good idea to remove this outer case when I weld it on, just so I don't chance damaging anything on the inside from all the heat from welding. Well, that also makes this thing quite a bit lighter and easier to hold in place. Nine inches of solid weld on each side. I guess I'm not gonna be able to reinstall the uh, inner part of the jack from the bottom here because there's not enough space, but if I remove the foot, I should be able to install it from the top. One of the nice things about a mag drill is that you can use the magnet to attach it while it's in an awkward position. It's a little bit of a tight fit. Ah, there we go, nice. And that'll keep the hose from getting damaged on the uh, sharp edges that I just cut out. Excellent. So for this hydraulic pump, I'm just gonna attach these hoses first. I'm just got standard JIC connectors. These things are pretty good to work with. So I have to install a flow divider here. This goes to the top port on the hydraulic pump. 
and then for the lower port on the hydraulic pump gets this T fitting for the return line. The flow divider here goes on the high pressure line. And then these two outputs here go to the pumps. The high pressure hose here goes to the left port. The plan is to sort of mount them and run them up on the top here. All right, well, I got these things mounted up here. I got the low pressure side mounted permanently with these nice little connectors here. And then the high pressure side is sort of zip tied in place, but you know, we do like to use zip ties sometimes. I have to remove all of this stuff before I paint it. So I don't think it's really that big of a deal if some of it is temporary. I am gonna fire up the jacks to test them out. However, I do wanna get some of this other stuff mounted first. So when it comes to filling this thing up with hydraulic fluid, there are actually a bunch of different types of fluids that you can use, which is really nice, but I am going to choose to go with ATF. This is a Dexron 3 ATF. It's cheap and readily available, so it'll make a great choice for this. Well, it's not quite all of a gallon, but it's most of a gallon. and. Now I guess I'm going to run it and keep an eye on this level. I'm sure I'll have to add fluid as it uh, sends fluid to two jacks. So I have this here, which is the control for the jacks. Also included in the kit is a wireless control unit so that you don't have to be constrained by these wires, but I have not hooked that up yet. I just realized that this is actually magnetic, so that's pretty neat. All right, here we go. Down. Yeah, I'm gonna have to top off the fluid quite a few times, I think. Well, that's one gallon. What was that? Oh, there it is. The up and down I had backwards. Up means trailer up, down means trailer down. I thought down would be jacks down, but so I had it the wrong way. Okay, that makes sense. Look at that. That is fantastic. The fluid level is still good here. Um, they actually move really quickly. So I have to say, my initial impression is that these are way better than mechanical jacks. Cause I mean, if you've towed a trailer before, you've done that thing where you do this for several minutes just to get the jacks to go all the way down. This is really awesome. Let's see how high it goes. Okay, that seems to be about as high as it goes. I mean, this is probably way higher than it needs to be. If your jacks don't go low enough because the ground is too low or whatever, you can always throw blocks of wood underneath, which is a really easy solution. Check my fluid level here. What can I say? I mean, it kind of speaks for itself. That's awesome. Now, of course, this build wouldn't be complete without some form of solar battery charging. And so I have a little solar panel here, which will help to keep the battery charged when I'm not using the trailer. This solar panel came along with the parts kit that I'm using for this, which also includes things like the jacks and the hydraulic pump, the hydraulic hoses, and other things like the axles, the wheels and tires, the lights, 
the breakaway switch, the safety chains, and quite a bit more. It has pretty much all the parts you need in order to build a trailer like this, and it's available from Johnson Trailer Parts, which I will put a link to in the description below. There's also a link to a more budget-friendly parts kit that has mechanical jacks instead of the hydraulic setup if you're looking for a more budget-friendly option. Johnson Trailer Parts is a family-owned business, and they're really awesome to work with. If you wanted to order a parts kit like the one for this trailer but customize it to your liking, all you have to do is give them a call and they'll be really happy to work with you. So I'm thinking about mounting this solar panel right here on this front tongue cross member. And the cable here is really long, so it should reach all the way back to the toolbox where the battery is. I think this will be a pretty good location because even if I back the trailer up underneath some trees, the front of it will probably still be out in the sun. It's pretty easy to control where the front of the trailer is. I made up a couple little brackets here out of flat bar, drilled some holes in it. It really doesn't have to be difficult to do this. It's pretty simple. I'll just weld these on something like that. Nice, well, that's not going anywhere. Lovely. Yeah, so the solar panel hooks up to this little box right here, and then that plugs onto the battery via these ring terminals. So it's pretty easy to hook up. Yeah, so I have never had a crew cab truck before, but apparently you can't see the gooseneck ball from inside the driver's seat. It makes it really hard to do this. That might be good enough. Well, I have to say it was really nice having a truck with four-wheel drive for driving around out here because one of the things that I didn't include in the video for part one of this series was how many times I got stuck out here while I was pulling the trailer around for the first time. You see, I was using my C3500 HD, which is of course rear wheel drive, and even though it is a dually and it had the weight of a trailer on the back tires, I still got stuck more times than I can count. I basically spent the whole time being pulled around by the tractor. So coming up for part three of this build series, I think I'm gonna be focusing on the back half of the trailer. I'm gonna be specifically building some nice fold flat, full width ramps. Those are gonna be pretty awesome. However, next on the channel, I think I am gonna be focusing on Brandon for quite a few videos. I have quite a bit of stuff to do with him. One of the biggest projects and most exciting is you might notice that he is missing a bed and I'm gonna be building a nice lightweight aluminum flatbed for him. It's gonna have skirted sides, toolboxes, a nice headache rack, LED lights. It is gonna be pretty sweet. 
So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to follow along with this and other projects. Thank you so much for watching.